Now, the British public has been absolutely battered by failed promises and platitudes, etc. when it comes to the migrant crisis. No one so far has managed to get to grips with it. In fact, it's the worst, literally the worst it's ever been. What's different this time with Rishi Sunak? Well, I don't think there is anything different. And that's the really uh, despairing fact about it, is that there were a lot of hope, hopeful words coming out of the Prime Minister's mouth today, but absolutely no detail on what he was going to do to make this happen. And unfortunately, we've heard this over the last two and a half years from various different people, that they were going to stop the boats, they're going to stop asylum seekers coming, they're going to remove people quickly. Mm. And absolutely nothing has been done because people are failing to understand where are you going to put them, where are you sending them back to, and where are the agreements to do so. So until you get that sorted, these are just very nice words to have, but that's it. Yeah. Now, a lot of people, of course, care about the NHS. That was one of his pledges. A lot of people absolutely care about the money in their pocket, inflation, national debt, work opportunities. That's unequivocal. Those are massive things. People really, really, really do care about the small boats. And it is a totemic thing because you can literally see it. It's all very well and good having some inflation figures on a spreadsheet and them looking like they're going in the right direction. But you can physically see migrants arriving at your local hotel. You can physically see them coming across the channel. If he doesn't get this right, has he just lost the next general election? <sighs> I think he has, to be honest. It's one of these issues where a lot has been promised. Now, I live in the county of Kent, so you can imagine how people in this county feel about it. People see them migrants coming across the beaches, they see um, hotels being taken and used up with no real plan as to how to deal with the individuals coming over. So I think that we have a really messy set of local elections coming up in May of this yeah. year. I think that will give you a feel of how angry people are across the country. And I think it will vary county by county. I think that there are some who aren't affected by it. But those that are, I think you'll see a real turn away for the Conservatives unless the these details are hammered out. But practically, is he actually going to be able to do anything? Is these phrases going to stop the boats? He's got to change laws, hasn't he? He's got to get us out of the ECHR. I mean, this is going to take time if it's indeed possible. Well, it will. It will take an enormous amount of time to get these things through and to get it sorted. And the first thing that you have to look at is what are you doing about the backlog of, uh, of asylum claims of people that are already here? And unless you sort that out and unless you have those agreements with other countries to return individuals, you're not going to get any further forward and you're just going to sort of work on the fringes of this without getting to the heart of the problem. And you can't stop the boats coming over unless you have a deterrent in place, which well, we clearly don't at the moment. Well, no, but I wonder whether or not he's missing a trick here, because at least the there is at least the threat of a flight taking off to Rwanda at some point in the near future. There is at least the threat of a P&O ferry being used as some form of token offshore, here we are, some kind of token offshore migrant processing centre. There is talk of at least potentially anyway there being some kind of deal with Albania or stronger deportation cases, etc. Shouldn't he be going on the attack and going, all right, you might not be happy with what we've done now, give me a bit time to do it. But if you vote for that guy over there, Keir Starmer, I tell you what, we won't have borders. Well, you can. You can always point the finger at the opposition, which is what we are incredibly good at doing. And that's the whole of politics uh, in a nutshell. But unless you can actually back that up, you say about Rwanda flights, they may take off in the future. I think it's going to be a long time in the future. I don't think the public believe that it is ever going to happen. Otherwise, it would have done uh, right now. So I think that, yes, you can play that blame game. But essentially, if you don't have the details, it's a wasted point. Just finally, Claire, a little bit off from the uh, channel topic and just more generally about Rishi Sunak. I, I've said it before, I'll just say it again now for people who are just joining us. I obviously always have the email inbox in front of me here. And uh, Boris Johnson could have physically committed a very heinous crime on the steps of Downing Street and people, thousands of people, would have told me that it didn't matter and they would still vote for the guy. Rishi Sunak is just not as well liked as Boris Johnson at all. Why is that? 
I think there is a large part of the public who see that it was Rishi Sunak who brought down Boris Johnson. Now, whether that is true or not, that is the narrative that is out there. And they see him as the one who betrayed Boris, the person that they liked, the person that they voted for. And I think that really is the crux of the matter. I think that Rishi Sunak has an awful lot of ground to make up, but he will never be as good as Boris Johnson at that rabble rousing speech as we've seen today.